Inside the government prison, Zekfon made a feel may Zekfon had a feeling inside that he didn't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! I... <laughs> uh, I can't read it. Okay. Um, inside the government prison, Zegafon had a feeling inside him that he didn't know what it was. The feeling was love. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Nerdiest Podcast, where nerds talk about nerdy things. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Mr. Jackson Glass, here. Now, if you listen to our last episode, you know we're in person right now. We usually record over Discord, but here I'm at Nick's house right now. So if you're watching on the video, that's why we look so crispy clear 4K, baby. So And we're wearing the same shirts as We're wearing as the same shirts <laughs> as last episode, because we had a, little, had a little, you know, we're like, we're in person, we're here for the weekend. Let's it's just okay. let's just pre-record a little bit. So we we're donning our Star Wars shirts today, and so hey, thank you so much for joining us. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, my ride or die. As always, Mister Nick Barrett. That's here me. as always. How are you, sir? Um, I'm alive, and I'm here. I'm not gonna make oh, the yeah. same joke. I've done that on a scale of ride or die. I'm pr- getting pretty close to die. That's a good one, though. I, it's a good one, but I've already <laughs> used it. So. Well, this episode's a little different. We, you know, we usually do like weekly recap and, uh, you know, go into the news and all this. But since we did that last episode and we finished recording that episode like an hour, like an hour ago. We don't have So that. we don't have any news. We don't have anything else to add. So we're going to be doing something a little special today. And we will be reading a story. It's actually that, the one we teased on the last episode. One we teased like on this. the last episode. Mr. Nick Barrett wrote this story a long time ago. Dang. And we did this... In December, and you guys loved it. We read a script that I wrote years, years ago in my my teenage years when I was like 13 or 12. I wrote that script, and it was really, really cringy and really awful. And we read it, and you guys loved it. So we're going to we're, do, it we're gonna do it again, and we're testing it out to see if this works as a series. And if you guys want to see more of it, definitely let us know. Support the show. Um, send it to your friends. Like it on YouTube. And follow everywhere on Instagram and YouTube and all that fun stuff because we do have new merch coming out very, very soon. So keep an eye out on that. It may be live by the time this episode's out. So don't make any promises. No promises because we've done that in the past. Now, Mr. Nick Barrett, give me a little history of the story. When was this written? What was it about? What was the inspiration? Okay. So it is actually kind of fitting that we're wearing Star Wars shirts Mm -hmm. because you'll find out this is like Star Wars E- so it's okay. Let me back up. I'm getting confused. Um, yeah. I wrote this in 2015, so I would have been 13. Yeah. Um, this was the first thing I ever like actually wrote. So let me put it this way: as bad as this is going to be with you as a listener mm-hmm. listening to this, this is what made me want to be a writer and write more because as bad as it is, and I <laughs> even would have acknowledged it was, well, no, I would I thought this was the coolest thing ever when I was 13. <laughs> um, I can now acknowledge that it is bad objectively, like even subjectively, I think it's bad. Yeah. Um, but I did have so much fun writing this out and just having fun with characters and writing. And this is what made me do that. And this actually is the first draft, first version of my current, like ultimate passion project, Mm -hmm. which is radically different now. The only thing I've kept is like a character name, right? (laughs) That's it. But it, it, it has the bones of what I wanted. This is what, the new thing like actually is now that I actually know how to write and have the concepts of storytelling. Um, so it's about this guy whose name is Ninja. What's the title? Not Ninja Fortnite. Um, it's called the adventures of Ninja, not Ninja (sighs) Fortnite. This actually predated Ninja Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I will also say the reason his name is Ninja um, is because my like cool Xbox gamer name was nin- <laughs> was a uh, Ninja Deathstorm because oh I thought that was like super cool and edgy. <laughs> um, so Ninja Deathstorm is the main yeah. character because I really just tried to write what I was feeling. This really comes off more as like. A journal entry than anything right. else. Right, it's very angsty, which you will see. And also, if you're watching on the video, I'd like to point out we have a lot of highlights on here. <laughs> highlights are just things we can't read. Explaining, I'm just gonna explain this a little bit. We went through this morning and highlighted anything we deemed too inappropriate for a PG podcast. Unreadable. Now, before you freak out, there's just the when you're 15 years old and you think you're so cool, you write some pretty violent things. It, yeah. There's nothing too bad, but we deemed that it was too violent and too graphic for a PG podcast. <laughs> so if you ever feel like you're missing <laughs> part of the story, you probably you are. You probably are. We're doing you a favor. <laughs> yeah. We are doing you a favor. If you feel so inclined to know what was cut out, send an email, a DM. Patreon.com forward slash. And, um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. you know, Patreon you know, anymore. so um, we, we're going to take turns going back and forth, reading different paragraphs. Um, I'm going to let you start since it's the intro. I don't know how long. I don't know. It's like 11 pages. Um, we'll see how long the episode ends up this turning out to be. could take an hour and a half. This could take three this hours. This could take who's three. You say? know, who's to say? <laughs> so know. here we are. The Adventures of Ninja. Written by me. Written by In 2015 him. at the and ripe age of 13. Already, already looking at this first paragraph, <laughs> I can already say <laughs> this is straight up a Ninjago fan fiction. No, this, okay. This is so Lego Ninjago. What's so different between this and the last episode is like the last one we did, I could just sit back and like laugh at you right, and how bad it was. Right. And now I'm in the hot seat because <laughs> this is me. Yeah. So here we are, the adventures of Ninja. And, you know, any Lego Ninjago fans out there will immediately point out all of the references to this. Well, the references um, stop after the first paragraph. Yeah. So, you know, if you if you feel so inclined and you like the show to support it, follow us on Instagram at The Nerdiest Podcast, on YouTube at The Nerdiest Podcast, Nerdiest Pod on Twitter, and the nerdiestpodcast.com for merch. This is going to be painful. We're going to slog through it together. Gonna, oh, boy. Thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> the Adventures of Ninja, written by Nicholas Barrett. Thank you. A long time ago, in a distant realm, a child was born. The child's name was Ninja, and he was born to Neon Tovia. Neon Tovia was only one of 16 realms in the universe. Another realm, for example, would be Ninjago. Ninja was only six when a squad... <laughs> Ninja was only... <laughs> and it's oh, sorry, it is. Ninja was only six when a squad of stormtroopers raided his family's compound. The troopers killed Ninja's parents, but for some odd reason, they spared Ninja. Until Ninja was 15 or 16, he scavenged for food outside the local pub. But after that, he became a mercenary for hire. His first job was to go kill the king's daughter, Elena. Ninja took, took the job and headed to the palace. When he arrived, it was late at night. This was to avoid the guard in the cover of night. He slowly snuck up on the princess's bedroom and pried, the, w- pried open the window with a dagger. As he prepared to stab the princess, she rolled over in bed, and Ninja saw her true beauty. He convinced himself that he shouldn't kill her, so he didn't. He just left. Not killing the princess. (laughs) (laughs) It just... This is some Madam Web level, like... It just... It just keeps going. Yeah, like, it's a bunch of run-on sentences that are, like... He convinced himself that he shouldn't kill her, so he didn't. He just left, not killing the princess, <laughs> and it's which like, I didn't need half of that it's sentence. Like, all right, you could you wrap it, it up It also, here. like, over-explains of, like, 
they raided his family's compound and killed his parents, but for some odd reason they spared him. Because as a kid, like, I didn't think that like the parents would hide the kids, right? And that's how they survive, right? They were just like, "Oh, he's fine." <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he's just a kid. Yeah, right. he's fine. We have more. I feel like this is like the opening like credits of every episode. Like yeah. this is the theme song. Like, Long before time, a <laughs> distant <laughs> realm, a child was born. Long like ago, this. the four nations lived together in <laughs> harmony. But then everything changed when the stormtroopers raided his family's compound and killed his parents. All right, this is gonna be rough. Only the Avatar. All right, we're gonna go back and forth. So. All right. Oh, mm. of course, I get the really long one. Yeah. Um. Okay. <sighs> I'm gonna have to try to read it as seriously as you did. <laughs> <clears throat> About three years after Ninja was hired to kill the princess, he found out that she was looking for a suitor. <laughs> <laughs> We're one sentence in. How did you guys meet? <laughs> Funny story. Funny story. <laughs> Ninja decided to try his luck and see if he could win. So he entered and prepared for the challenges that would lie ahead. Oh my gosh. After multiple tests that involved defense and combat, Ninja was one of five left to win. The next test was meeting and talking to the princess so that she could see and talk to the remaining contestants. It's like The Bachelor, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually just The Bachelor. Um, Ninja was last, so when it was his turn, he wasn't very confident that he could win over the princess's heart. Just outside the palace, a group of rival mercenaries from a different faction prepared to attack the castle during this meeting. All of a sudden, the palace doors were busted down, and the group yelled, Get on the ground! The people, having no defenses, did as they said. In the meeting room, alarms went off. Ninja grabbed his weapons and said to the princess, Let's go! I'll get you to the safe house. So she obliged and followed Ninja down the hallway that led to the safe house. I also want to point out, <laughs> this is supposed to be like a medieval fantasy setting. Right. But they have alarms, and as you'll later find out, Fully functioning electricity, such as security right, cameras and right. video games. And also stormtroopers in the medieval hey, fantasy setting. Stormtroopers are a legit thing. Okay. These stormtroopers were specifically from Star Wars, <laughs> but, but stormtroopers have been know, a thing in the past. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah. Not, no. Anyway. <laughs> Ninja took out multiple members of the rival faction. Which, but... Ninja suddenly stopped and stared down the hallway at his rival. How do you think that's pronounced? I just want to know how you think that's I'm pronounced. I'm laughing at the dialogue right after because I don't know if, I, if you can <laughs> say that. <laughs> um, okay. Um, Zekafon? Oh my gosh, you got it right really? on the first try. You Yo, get this, but you can't get go. Japanese names? Come Zekafon. on. Uh, stared down the hallway at his rival, Zekafon. Fancy, this is not, it's not what you think. <laughs> no, then say it. Then say it if it's okay. not what I think. <laughs> <laughs> say it if it's not what I think. <laughs> then say it. Fancy seeing you here. Ninga. <laughs> It's okay. It's N I N G A. The reason I did that was because, like, my, like I said, my nickname was Ninja. Oh, I'm so cool. But so many people would mispronounce it with a G instead of a J. So they would say, oh, you're Ninga Deathstorm. And I'm like, N no. That's so racist. Because they think, like, the G and the J make the same sound. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't know how to tell you this. I think you're being profiled. I don't think you're so right. <laughs> I never thought about it that way until, like, just now. This is why I gave you this paragraph. I can't say that. I know. Um, <laughs> Zekafon stated, saying Ninja's name wrong purposely to get on his nerves. Well, Zek, it's a small world. It's a small world. Um, Ninja replied with a smirk. Why would you protect her? She could be sold for enough credits to buy you food for multiple years, Zekafon said. Okay. <laughs> I just want to put a disclaimer out there. Selling people is not okay. No, that's pretty screwed that's up. That's bad. That's pretty screwed up. Trafficking is bad. Don't yeah, do it. No. <laughs> um, where was I? Da, 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 da. Because, because it's the right thing to do, Ninja said as he drew his sword and lowered his shades. Oh, yeah. He had sunglasses, by the way. So he's like pulling out his Actually, sword and like, because it's the right thing to do. Nice. He's so cool. 
Zegafon, kind of mad at this point, said, If I have to kill you to get to her, so be it. Both fought for what seemed like hours, until Ninja dealt an uppercut to Zek that knocked the sword out of his hand and put him on the floor. I don't think that's how uppercuts work. Like, went, if you uppercut, boo. you're, you're going up. punching their head, not usually their hand. Anyway. Anyway. Ninja then went and got the princess and said, let's go. He then asked her, what's your name? He doesn't know this chick's name. He doesn't know this girl's name, what's even though name, he's trying girlfriend? to, like, marry what's her. What's your name? Okay. Um, Does he go to a Christian college? Probably. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not going to say that. Um, she replied and said my name is Elena Soon after he got Elena to the shelter And handed her a card and said if you ever need my help Again just call oh my gosh. And with that he left Elena then told her father which of the suitors she chose She said father I choose ninja I choose ninja He gave her a business card and said I'm going to head up You know when you ever <clears throat> Hey this is Riz tip number one <laughs> Riz tip number one if, Business uh, cards If uh, you know Give give girls a business card. They think that's really uh, they think that's really. I hot. think it's really hot. They'll pick um, you to be their suitor. Yeah, they'll tell their dad. <laughs> what word did you wait? Ah. Oh, you're yeah, right. You're, yeah. you're right. We were gonna sub that word out. <clears throat> so, I love I, every professional writer starts a paragraph with so. <laughs> so I thought uh, you were talking so about the first letter of every paragraph being being mega capitalized. Yeah, no nah, says. So some time after the attack, the emperor summoned for Ninja to be brought to the palace. Now, the guards just showed up to Ninja's apartment door and said, You're coming with us. Now, Ninja just assumed he had been caught for smuggling items from other realms, so he resisted. But in doing that, he was knocked out by the guards and forcefully taken to the palace. He woke up in a chair that was positioned directly in front of the emperor. The emperor then broke the news to Ninja that his daughter, Elena wanted him to be her spouse. Ninja couldn't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you wrote exclamation mark. Ninja couldn't, argue, couldn't with argue with that. <laughs> so he agreed. The two shook hands and Ninja went to see Elena. This is like old school Bible times. Like, well, not really because she got an opinion in who she married. Can we just be like, can we just be like, um, let me run this scenario. I'd like to marry your daughter. Okay. <laughs> I mean, All that's right, how it nice. used to go. <laughs> so glad we've evolved a little mm. bit since then. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right. So here's our here's our first time jump. Time right. jumps are going to be really, um, really, confusing. really crucial here. All right. Ninja and Elena were married two months after and lived happily in Neontovia in the Neontovia Palace for a year before Ninja began warrior warriors training. Okay. So. Two months after the last paragraph, we then do a year-long time jump. Okay, you know, um, that's fine. <laughs> but after a long day of training, Ninja went home to Elena, and the two had dinner, watched a movie, there's more <laughs> modern technology, and then went to bed. But that night, in a club building, not too far away. In a away, club building. <laughs> not too far away. Zekafon and his crew were devising a devious plot. Devious. A plot. To kidnap Elena. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Ain't no way. Zekafon's plan was to tra <laughs> tranquilize. <laughs> what a word. <sighs> wow. Tranquilize Ninja so that he couldn't get up and protect his spouse. Then they would blindfold Elena, handcuff her, and leave. They would then ransom her off either as a servant in a different empire or just sell her to another empire or emperor to be a servant. Wait, that's the same thing. Yeah. Either You're either gonna sell her off to a different empire or another emperor, which would imply that's the same a thing. Empire. That's the same thing. Okay. Oh my god! As I said, selling people is bad. Don't yeah, do it. Don't do that. <laughs> um, Zekafon was satisfied with his plan, so he gathered some men <sighs> and they headed off to the palace. Sometime around midnight, the group pried the window of Ninja and Elena's bedroom open and snuck in. One member tranquilized Ninja while the other handcuffed and blindfolded Elena. Whoa. She woke up screaming but was soon knocked out so that no one heard. The group left having successfully completed the mission. Oof. I'd, how deep is this? Like, How deep are you asleep right that you don't hear <sighs> people like, walk in? They break in and you're like, oh, what's happening? Oh my gosh, I'm being kidnapped. Gonk. <laughs> Gonk. <laughs> I imagine that's how Ninja sleeps, though. He seems like the Ninja seemed like the kind of dude that would. <laughs> 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 You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, gosh. Okay. All right, this, you're up, bud. Look at this. <laughs> The next morning, bro didn't even like, like... He was tranquilized. You know? Oh, he was tranquilized. I thought he was just sleeping. No, he was tranquilized. <laughs> he was tranquilized. Okay, you're right. The next morning, Ninja awoke to find only himself in the bed. He said, Pookie? <laughs> Pookie, where you at? <laughs> he immediately alerted the palace guards. He then checked the security feeds... In quotations, because fearing this might happen, he put security cameras in him in Elena's <laughs> room. <laughs> Yo, this medieval fantasy. <laughs> also, it's like we got yeah, them cameras in our for room. the security. We're putting cameras in our bedroom for the security, guys. <laughs> it's for the. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. This is not PG. Um, <laughs> But he was shocked with what he saw. He then donned his gear, said farewell to the emperor, and dashed out of the gates to the hunter's hideout, which he knows where it is. Apparently. No, no, no. You got to read the next sentence. Oh, my gosh. Well, also, like, I really love the thought of, like, waking up in, like, this medieval castle. And he's like, we have to check the security camera. <laughs> he's just playing the new FNAF game. Oh, my gosh. When he arrived, he went to his used-to-be regularly visited bar. See? There it is. This is how we knew. He asked the bartender if he knew where Zekafon was. The bartender replied, Zekafon and his buddies lef left late last night on a mission. Then they came back with someone with a bag over their head. Then they left. I asked where, going, where they were going, and they said they were going to Clust. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know why that was the name I chose. They're going to Clust. <laughs> Ninja's face grew with anger, and he said to the bartender, That's my wife! The princess. Little John Mulaney over here. All right, uh, John. That's my wife, the princess. The bartender's face lit up with shock at the fact that Zikafon kidnapped the princess. See, you just explain too, min too much. Yeah. He's like, oh my gosh, the princess. And then it's like, he was in shock because the princess was kidnapped. And it's like, well. Listen, we I have a problem with over explaining <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Ninja then turned and walked out of the bar as his blue jacket flapped behind him. He now realized he had a new mission to save Elena. Oh, good. I'm going to get the problem paragraph. Oh, nice. We worked that out real nice. Look at all nice. that orange down there. Not That's a no-go. <laughs> Not appropriate, guys. Sorry. Um, later that day, Zekafon and his crew arrived in Clust with Elena in tow. Oh, my gosh. They then requested to see the Emperor of Clust instead of just saying the Emperor. Okay. Nice. Because <laughs> they had a <laughs> gift for him. The guards saw the prisoner and immediately granted them access to the palace. During the meeting, Zekafon told the Emperor that he could have Elena for a small price of two billion two credits. billion with credits. With a B. What's the conversion rate? I don't know. <laughs> I That's genuinely crazy. don't know. That's crazy. The emperor, being very rich, <laughs> you know, as emperors are. You know, the emperor, being very said rich. Yes. Mm -hmm. Zekafon and his crew left with a buttload of money, <laughs> and Elena was now a permanent servant to the emperor of Clust. Ooh. This would prove to be an issue for Ninja in his newfound quest, but little did Zekafon know, Ninja was coming to seek vengeance for what Zekafon did. You could say he... No. What he did. No, no, <laughs> you don't understand. The word he does not exist. Also, I feel like this is the, this is like, page break could go right here. Like, this is the, the final, like, voiceover for the episode. Yeah, but like, no, just we're on episode going. two now. Right, like, it just keeps going. All right. After traveling through the portal to Neon Tovia that went to Clust, the first thing nin Ninja did was... Said Ninga, dude. No, stop! <laughs> The first thing Ninja did was head to a local bar to try and gather some info on any recent business with the Emperor. I do see the line of logic where it is a very medieval fantasy thing to be like, I need information. So I'm going to the pub. Let's go to the pub. Like Lord of the Rings does that. Yeah. And like, I see the logic <sighs> to gather information about the Emperor. Someone walked over to Ninja and said, I heard the Emperor received a new servant yesterday. I think she was a foreigner. Who sold her to the Emperor? Ninja asked. <clears throat> Ninja asked. Some new hunter from another empire, the mystery man replied. Do you have any idea which empire he came from? Ninja asked. I think he was from Neontovia, the man replied. <laughs> 
Thanks for your time and information, Ninja said, as he bought the man a drink. <laughs> then he walked out of the bar. He didn't give that guy a business card. No <laughs> business card for that. Well, he wasn't in love with that guy, I guess. <laughs> oh, my god! Only okay. romantic interests get uh, business cards. Duh. It's duh. Yeah. It's like the wife ballsy. Anyway. He walked out of the bar. As he walked up to the palace sometime later, he asked if the guards if he could meet with the emperor. The guards replied with a sharp, no, and they unsheathed their swords. Ninja asked again politely and said he would leave all his <laughs> weapons in the security booth until he left the palace. The guards reluctantly agreed, took Ninja's gear, and admitted him to the palace. This random guy's like, yo, can I come in? No. No. Okay, but what if I leave all my stuff here? Yeah, sure. not right. That's sure. Straight up just no, the wait, TSA, this though. This is going to be the... That's straight up the <laughs> TSA, though. <laughs> this is actually... Because I'm like, can I... No, no, no. I'm not going off of this. I imagine, like, Paul Blart, like, in this freaking, <laughs> like, thing on the side of this, like, Ganondorf castle looking, like... <laughs> And he's like, what if I left my stuff here? <laughs> All right. All right. Um, this is it, guys. This is the big G's. The I big think this G's. is the most we highlighted. <laughs> yeah, no, this is bad. Good. We're like, and we're pretty in the, no, never mind. I lied. The next page has orange on <laughs> As Ninja was escorted to the Emperor's chambers, he admired the elegant design inside the palace. It's like, wow, this It wasn't as fancy nice. as the Neon Tovia Palace, but it was nice. <laughs> I love so, that you just slid that in So there. <laughs> that line is in there because- so I, when I was writing this, I wrote it in chunks. Right. This was the start of like session two. Right. And I had shown the like before stuff right. to someone else. And they were like, well, you're not being descriptive enough. <laughs> so you need to be more descriptive. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, right. so the palace looks cool anyway. Anyway. Um, also, I disagree. I think you're being a little too descriptive. <laughs> <laughs> well, they meant like environment wise. Okay. Like you're okay. not being descriptive that enough in the environment. And then you were too descriptive and we had to <laughs> highlight a ton of stuff and we had to cut it out. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, listen, the more description got you. Nobody's <laughs> first writing project was no, their best no. one. Okay. Nobody peaked oh with gosh. draft one. Okay. The grand door to the Emperor's chamber was opened by Ninja's escort. Ninja was shocked, shocked to look over and see Elena holding a tray of drinks that was to be served at their meeting. Oh my gosh. But as soon as Ninja walked in oh the door, gosh. Elena threw the tray down and ran to him. This is another uh, uh, where I could have used she. Right. Like as right. I was reading that, I naturally wanted to say she. She ran to because him. that makes sense. But it was Elena ran. Elena saw him, so Elena ran to him. <laughs> and then there's a lot of stuff that we can't read. Yeah. Um. Long story short, uh, they have a conversation and then they're leaving. Y sure. He's just like, all right, we're gonna leave now. Yeah. The guard asked Ninja, "Do you have a permit to take this servant?" And Ninja said, "Yes, I do." As he held up the ring that was under his black fingerless gloves. So he was wait. Wait, wait. So the ring was underneath wait. the glove. So he So was, you couldn't see it. <laughs> so she's so the like, can you take this servant? And the dude's like, yeah, that's my wife. Yeah. And it's he's my like, wife. Oh, he's just gotta flash that little diamond. <laughs> Listen, that's a privilege. He strapped on his gear, grabbed Elena's hand, and they walked off into the crowd to find a portal back to Neon Tokyo. Also, what kind of like ran weirdly stand up society is this where they're like, see that chick from the other kingdom? I want her to be my servant. Oh, her husband wants her back? Mobby. Yeah, he can leave. I don't I don't think I think this cuz I'm pretty sure uh later down the line this causes these two nations to go to war with each other. So Dang. like there are overlap like <laughs> long standing consequences because the king was like I, you God. kidnapped my kid. Right. <laughs> like I also don't think he was politely like Oh, this is my wife. And they were like, oh, okay. Right. Like, I think he just did it, took his stuff, and left before right. they could say anything. Right. So, he had to go back to the security booth and yeah, take his stuff. Back to the security booth. Oh. <laughs> I just imagined him, like, taking off his belt and he just, like, put it in the little box and it, like, it has goes, to go goes through, through the, the metal thing. detector. But it's, like, all of the things, like, in the, I'm directing this movie in my head, but it's, like, on the screens, you see, like, his swords <laughs> and, like, all his, like, stuff. And he has, like, bombs and they just, like, all go through the thing and you see the x ray. He's like, uh, that's not uh, mine. That's not mine. Um, <clears throat> All right. Upon arrival at the Neon Tovia Palace, Ninja informed the Emperor that he was going to look for Xenophon so that he could seek Wh hope. Zekophon. You said Xenophon. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> the Xenoblade? The Xenoblade? <laughs> 
Uh, Ninja informed the Emperor that he was look for Zekaphon so that he could seek vengeance. The Emperor obliged and said farewell. Ninja then headed out to the local bar. All right. <laughs> he headed out of the local bar where Zekaphon liked to hang out. He's like, is this a villain or is it like a punk kid? Like, <laughs> he's you'll like, see. You'll like, see. He just you'll likes see. to hang you'll out. See. You'll you know? see. <laughs> Zekaphon likes to hang out. When Ninja walked in, he was surprised to see Zekaphon standing at the bar buying himself and his crew drinks to celebrate their most successful mission yet. And they came out billionaires. Right. Dude. No, for real. <laughs> I think the other emperor is the one who should be pissed. Like this, like <laughs> two, $2 billion, billion dollars and then later the, ne- the <clears throat> same day. Yeah, she gets their taken. Your investment is gone. <laughs> Dang. Ninja walked up, grabbed Zekaphon's shirt, and dragged him out behind the building. Let's take this outside. (laughs) He said, well, let's take this outside, buddy. Then he punched him in the face multiple times before easing up. (laughs) Sorry, I can't read this. (laughs) I just really love the... He's like, hey. (laughs) He told Zekaphon, never touch my wife again. And if you intrude again, I won't be so nice next time. This gives me Will Smith slap vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my wife's name out, out your, your freaking mouth. mouth. <laughs> then Ninja knocked him out and left him behind the bar as he left to return to the palace. Um, y- yeah. It checks out. Um, is Ninja the good guy? Sure. Is he like... I feel like he's kind of like a an anti-hero in the way. Yeah, he's, he's like, like Batman. He's kind of like, yeah, he's very Batman. Gadgets. Where he's like, you know, I won't kill you, but your hospital bills definitely will. <laughs> and it's like, I will make sure you, which is almost worse. Yeah. And he's like, I will leave you like. What kind of health care does this empire have? Right. It's like, well, I mean. They seem to have everything else that is conveniently modern. Yeah. They can like, still watch movies. Maybe and they have... got hospitals. I don't know. <laughs> Oh gosh! And then the next paragraph is completely, completely unreadable. <laughs> yeah. Um. Sorry about that. Sorry, guys. Um, it also wouldn't make any sense because we like it's context for something else that got right. Cut and out. it's just you know we we don't need it. So yeah, that that uh, that story arc ends there. So we can start the next story arc now. So we're on episode three. Oh okay. Um, I'm glad that you said that because there's nothing here that would have told me that. <laughs> There's nothing here that would have told me that. This is literally this is just, just paragraph, 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 paragraph. <laughs> like there's, liter- no, like, there's no chapter breaks, no nothing. This is literally an 11-page document of non-sequiturs right. that are somehow connected. It's an anthology. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're going to get a beefy paragraph. Oh, s- hooray. Um, one day, the king requested Ninja to come see him because he wanted to talk. When Ninja arrived, the king said to Ninja, I need I have something I need to tell you. What is it? Ninja asked. Ninja <laughs> <laughs> He's already <laughs> Ninja <laughs> You have a sister. <laughs> what? <laughs> Ninja said, <laughs> said in shock. shock. Yes, her name is Antium, which, by the way, is not my name. <laughs> I, oh, my gosh. Um, that was a name my friend came up with. So if she wants to come at me for it, sure. I'm yeah. not actively using it, though. Um, Dang. The king replied, I believe she lives in the underground with all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> she lives in the underground with all the She gangs. lives with the poor people. Lives, <laughs> um, I don't know if you know this. She, she lives in Chicago. <laughs> oh, no. Um, You should go get her and bring her back here. I will, Ninja said. So he donned his infamous blue jacket, sword. Okay, hold on. So we got a blue jacket, swords, pistols, daggers, and shades. And he left for the underground to try and find his long lost sister, Antium. You didn't so he's basically Deadpool. Yeah, no, he's literally like, Deadpool. He's got the swords, the guns. An extra weapon. Right. And then, of course, and his then trademark His shades. trademark, like, shades. And his... I love how it says his infamous blue jacket. Like, we have known all this time that uh, he had a blue You've known him jacket. for three pages. You should know that he is an infamous blue jacket. Yeah, it's duh. infamous. Come on. I also feel like you were like, okay, well, I'm, 
I wrote the whole wife arc. Like, now what? <laughs> now what? Like, 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 I don't know. You have a sister. What? what? It was a shock to me, too. You could you could have written for the sequel trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow Wars, Palpatine you know? returned. <laughs> somehow Palpatine. They're like, I don't know. That one's over. What do we do now? Um, Good question. You are a Skywalker. What? Ray oh, my gosh. Shock. You get a beefy paragraph. Lord have mercy. And I then there's, okay. there's another beefy one. Okay. <clears throat> you guys ready for this? All right. Yeah. Later that day, deep in the underground, Ninja entered another bar to see if anyone knew someone named Antium. Okay, so he has security cameras, security booth, he can watch movies, but there's no Facebook. <laughs> no, no. Like, no he social can't media. search up this girl on Facebook. Well, you um, can search up his parents, but they're dead. Yeah, that's real. That's real. So, and if so, where she resided. You probably felt so smart. I sure resided. did. Resided was a big word for me. <laughs> asking where she resided. Oh. After asking around for a while, Ninja finally got his answer. Antium lived in a small apartment. There was only one problem. <laughs> that apartment was in the Nexon. Bwah. Bwah. Cue Nexon theme. The Nexon was a prison for highly dangerous criminals who committed crimes so terrible they would stay in the Nexon for a specific amount of time before they were executed. I see. No, like, I don't understand the premise here. Like you're going to jail, but the whole time you live there, you know you're gonna get executed right. Like that's, at the end of your sentence. That's, like what's that's the point? Screwed up. That's Prison really is supposed up. to reform you to send you back into society. Not, right. Ah, well, your sentence is over. Die. Well, die. This is like Andor. <laughs> I can't wait for you to find out why she's in prison. Oh my gosh, I'm it's so excited. It's so funny. Also, like, was this just Arkham Asylum, or was this a, was there a Star Wars prison that was like this? Yeah, or... this is like Star Wars prison. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> Uh, I get next to you. Ninja, of course, got entry. <laughs> oh my god! He's a main gosh. character. He's got plot armor. Ninja, dude. of course, got entry since he was royalty. Oh, that's right. He is a prince. Now. He was like, "Let me in." And they were like, okay. <laughs> "My wife." Do you know who my wife is? My wife. Do you know who my <laughs> father-in-law is? Oh, I, I actually work for. Um, I actually work for um, your mom. You know, your my my brother-in-law's father, um, and um, you know he he said this and he, uh, yeah. Um, he then requested to see prisoner one zero three zero three, Antium. Yeah. They granted him access and escorted him to the cell. As they arrived, Ninja could see a figure about his height standing alone in a dark cell. He was a short king. <laughs> you were. You're, I was projecting. This is a lot of projection. Yeah. This is a lot of projection. Wait till we get to the end and you oh find out gosh. that this is actually just essentially me writing a fan fiction with my three uh, right, closest friends. Right, <laughs> right. At the time, my At three closest time. friends. Oh, he was standing, figure how he's alone in a dark cell. The guard turned off the electric field to the cell and Ninja went inside. What do you want? Are you here to take me? Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> I don't think I can say that. Can I say that? I mean, yeah. I, <sighs> what do you want? It's prison. <laughs> Are you here to take me to my death or slowly torture me again? Listen, I'm not saying it was the best prison. <sighs> as clearly insinuated here. <sighs> oh, Antium asked Ninja, thinking he was a guard. Because she's blind, I no. guess. No. Why would I do that, Ninja said. I'm here to get you out. Oh. Well, how do you plan to do that? Antium said with an attitude. Attitude adjustment. I have royal clearance, Ninja said. Well then, let's go. My stuff is impound downstairs. In an impound downstairs. Ninja explained to the guard how he had clearance from the king to take Antium back to the Nexon for good. He obliged and took them to the impound to get Antium's stuff. Well, on their way, Antium asked Ninja... Why did you come for me now? What do you mean, Ninja replied. I mean, you're royalty. Why would you care about a low-life consumer who landed themselves in a permanent prison? Antium asked. Because you're my sister, Ninja said. This is like a Return of the Jedi level. <gasps> what the? Because <laughs> oh? you're my sister. <gasps> oh my gosh, Ninja said. Antium was very surprised at this development. Wait a minute. You're my brother? Antium asked. Yeah, but what happened to you? 
after mom and dad were killed in the raid? Ninja asked. By the well, stormtroopers. I was sitting at the dinner table, and I heard the knock on the door, too. The first thing I remember was mom putting you in a barrel. <laughs> and she <laughs> and she came back and put me in one, too. <laughs> so, hold on. I want to know oh that gosh. she didn't know she had a brother. This was a shock to her. Right. But she remembers him getting and put, put in, in a barrel, barrel first. And she was like... I didn't know I had a brother. I just remember her putting some random kid in a barrel. Maybe and I was, was like, I don't know. He was probably just some neighbor kid. Uh, just like, barrel. And I, she put me in one, too. I heard blaster fire, and I was scared. I didn't know if you were dead or alive, so I stayed in my barrel for a week. I heard someone or something messing around in the kitchen, but I was so scared I never came out of my barrel. After this week, after that week, there was no noise, so I left my barrel. You say my barrel like <laughs> 500 times. It's her barrel. I had to make sure that oh it was gosh. possessive Whose plural. barrel was it? I don't know. After that week, there was no noise, so I left my barrel and went out to find food. Until I was 14, I ate garbage. God Once I turned boy. 14, I became a bounty hunter, and I ended up in the Nexon three years ago for stealing and trading vibranium. <laughs> I told you I can't wait for you to find out why she was in She's jail. She's stealing vibranium, like, yeah. from Black Panther? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, vibranium's legit, dude. It's from oh another realm. Oh, my gosh. See, you He's don't understand the vibranium. deep intricacies I talked about in a couple of paragraphs ago. Ninja oh thought he gosh. was caught for smuggling stuff from other realms, which is a setup for her stealing Oh, vibranium. my gosh. That's crazy. Um, I've been ste for tra stealing and trading vibranium. Since then, I've been in the Nexon, Antium told Ninja. Well, you can come live in the palace with me and my wife, Elena, Ninja said to Antium. Thanks, bro, Antium said with excitement. And the two left the Nexon and headed to the palace. So this is another episode break? Um, oh my gosh. I feel like this is like, it ends on the slow motion high Where it's five. Like, <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> you didn't hold it. <laughs> It'd be like, you can come live in the palace with my, me and my wife. wife. Thanks, bro. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> All right, here we go. <sighs> All right, this is where All it gets right. interesting. This is the good stuff, guys. This is the meat. The meat Five and months later. Ooh, Nelly. So we. I'd also like to say my time skips are arbitrary numbers I picked at random. Oh, I'm sure. Except for when the numbers mattered, which they will matter later. Oh, my um, gosh. Five months later, after Ninja got Antium. Dang. Ninja and Elena were celebrating their two-year two wedding anniversary. I don't, I don't think that timeline is lining up. <laughs> no, because it's been... <laughs> So so hold on. It was two months from the initial like interaction. Right. They got married. They, they got married two months after that initial interaction. And then a year after that, she gets kidnapped. Yeah. And then an undisclosed amount of time passes before he goes and finds his sister. Yeah. And now five months later, we're at the two-year anniversary. So I guess it vaguely kind of makes sense. I yeah. You're just your travel time is real quick at this point. There's a few months in between. There's a couple that points are undocumented. I'm like, I don't think you would actually be text. able to go that fast though. Well no, they have portals, man. Well right. It's, I just picture I don't know about you, I'm picturing a giant nether portal. Like Yeah, next that's what to, it was. Okay, cool. <laughs> it was like no, it was actually like the Lego Dimensions portal. No way. That was like up against a wall. <sighs> I think it was crazy. So the couple decided to go to Caldava for a romantic retreat, but little did they know, Zekafon was about to strike again. <gasps> oh no! But this time he wasn't going to kidnap Elena; he was going to kill her. Oh my gosh! Bum, bum, bum. Once on Caldava, Ninja and Elena stayed in an elegant resort called the Yensen. They also saw the <laughs> magnificent mountains formed in the very early days of the planet. Hey, wow. gotta get my Jesus reference in there. <laughs> <laughs> Zekafon secretly followed them to Kaldava. He traveled alone, but he did have a devious plot to wake... N oh. 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 I admit, oh. That's fine. Uh, to hey, um... <clears throat> I don't want to say trigger warning. Trigger warning. <laughs> but, like... This is about to get a little screwed up. Yeah. Like, there's going to be some murder. It's not bad enough that we had to, like, orange it. But, you know, little... <laughs> this is some PG... This is PG-13. PG Dash 13. Dash 13. 
Um, so just keep that in mind for younger audience. Um, um, okay, where is it? If you'd have a devious plot to wake Ninja and kill Elena in front of him as payback for destroying his mercenary credentials. I like how there's a whole like mercenary bounty hunter thing that I never fully dove into. No, it's just like, yeah, he's a bounty hunter. He's a bad guy. Yeah, it's okay. Because that was like, if you're not a hero or a villain, you're a right, bounty hunter right. that's in between. That's how Star Wars works. <laughs> now. Ninja, fearing this kind of thing would happen, brought Antium with as a bodyguard. Antium stayed awake all night watching, making sure no one got in the resort room. But Zegaphon was prepared. He waited for Antium to take a bathroom break. <laughs> this is very much like when you're playing with Legos and you're like, but I thought of this. Ah, but I uh, thought but of also this. But this. I thought of this. Oh. And it just keeps going back and forth. <laughs> um, bathroom break. He busted the window open, not caring about stealth. Before okay. Antium came back in the room, he knocked out Ninja, and when Antium returned, he knocked her out, too. Oh, nice. Easy money. Easy. After tying Elena to a chair, he walked over to Ninja and awoke him. And just woke, dude. Whoa. Whoa. As Ninja opened his eyes, all he saw was Zekafon holding a sword at Elena's neck. No! Ninja screamed, this is my revenge, Ninja. That night when I failed my attack on the palace because of you, I lost all mercenary cred. You took away what I love, so I'll do the same to you. As Zek began to swing his sword at Elena's neck, oh my Antium grabbed his leg and pulled him onto the floor. Whoa. Ninja went untied Elena and positioned her behind him as he drew his sword. Wait, so he was tied up, miraculously untied himself. Right, there was no, and like... And had his sword on him? Like, there was no, like, he untied himself, he cut the rope, like, he, he, he had... He just stood up. He was just like he was sitting there fine. voluntarily. He was like, "No, I mean, I guess no, don't do that. No, please, sweep the leg, <laughs> sweep the leg, blah." Yeah, no, that could have been worked. That could have worked a little um, better. Um, Antium handcuffed Zek and knocked him out cold on the floor. She then stood up, brushed herself off, while asking Elena if she was okay. After getting the resort staff to repair the window, the couple then happily enjoyed the rest of their vacation. So, yeah, this royal figure was almost um, murdered. But yeah, we're just gonna go back to our happy Disney vacation. But also, like you know, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, this happens. I love the. We've done um, this before. Like it's so casual. Like once he's down, everyone's like, they're like, ah, you meddling kids, huh, like you ooh, ooh, ooh. silly little guy. <laughs> also, like, w I, I did this too. I feel like. <laughs> Continue. I did this too <laughs> in my early writing when it was very like, you don't really know what what to do, so someone has to get knocked out. Right, like somebody's gonna get knocked out to progress the right, plot forward. Right, right. You can't kill anybody. You can't like. I don't think anybody dies. No, you. They have to be knocked story. out. Right. Yeah. All, All right. right. We're into some shorter paragraphs now. Yeah. Once Ninja, Elena, and Antium returned from Kaldava. Also, why did he bring his sister on his wedding anniversary trip? As a bodyguard. Were you not listening? Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Turned from Kaldava. Antium took Zek to the local prison where he would stay for multiple years for multiple attempts to murder the princess. I feel like he belongs in the next one. Right. Like, why isn't he in the like, next one? Like, she smuggled some illegal materials. Sure. Right. Put to death. This guy tried to assassinate a royal figure, figure twice. Three times. Three times. Um, This is just the America that we live <laughs> yeah. in, I guess. I don't know, man. <laughs> another day, another, another prisoner day. walks free. <laughs> Dang. Ninja and Elena began to wonder. <laughs> Stop. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. Uh, mm. Ninja and Elena began to wonder what life would be like if they had children. So they started planning to have a child within the next year. Typical Christian yeah, right. couple. Behavior. Inside the government prison, Zekfon made a feel may Zekfon had a feeling inside that he didn't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! I can't read it. Okay. Um, inside the government prison, Zegafon had a feeling inside him that he didn't know what it was. The feeling was love. He was in love with Antio. So he gets beat up by a girl once and he's like, oh. 
That's my future like wife the, right the Lego there. Batman. I. I just died in your arms tonight. <laughs> Must have been something to say. Dude definitely has a certain type of. Uh, oh. <laughs> mm. All right. I don't want to. Nope. I'm okay. Oh, perfect. I'm okay. So uh, this is going to work out great. Okay. Um, Inside the prison where Zekafon was staying, he contemplated how he could escape to go confess his love for Antium oh to my her. Oh, God. Stop. Oh, then he realized he could make a break for it during the eating session, also known as. Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'm gonna st- I'm gonna start texting people. Hey, are you going to the eating session today? <laughs> hey guys, are you guys ready to clock out? Are for Are you guys our ready session? for a little eating session? That feels like feels like a corporate boss. It's like so <laughs> out of touch. Hello, how are you enjoying your eating? Hey session? guys, you want to go have an eating session with me later? <laughs> so after he got his food, he sat closest to a window. The window did have bars on it, but none of the guards were looking. So he took his tray and smashed the window. He pried the bars off the window and made the 15-foot jump to the ground. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that's not... Like... Could be worse. It could... I you mean, could survive it. I mean, that's the equivalent of jumping off, like, a second-story building. You could survive 15-foot in the right scenario. Yeah, if you tuck and roll. Um, He then broke into the impound, stole his stuff back, and made a break for it. He then headed towards the palace to find Antium and tell her of his love for her. So he broke out. So he was out of the prison. Oh, my god! Went gosh. back into the impound to get his stuff and then left again. At th- dude, leave your stuff. Like, leave just, your stuff at that point. Just go for bro. it. Oh, oh my god! But I had to have an excuse as to why. This is like when characters <laughs> who wear the same outfit get kidnapped and go through an outfit change. Right. You have to justify why they would be wearing they their go normal get their outfits back. on model outfit right. again. See, I just love that he was like, like, why isn't he in the in the Nexon? Because dude, like, used his lunch tray to break out of this prison. Another day, another, another prisoner another, walks another, free. Another, that's what I'm saying. Oh, gosh. At the palace, Antium, Ninja, and Elena were chilling in the lounge playing some video games. Future technology. When all of a sudden, the door was busted down and Zek walked in. I love this next line. (laughs) Ninja grabbed his gun and instantly pointed it at Zek, as if it were an involuntary action. Wait! Zek yelled. I'm not here to kill any of you. I'm here to tell Antium something. Speak then before (laughs) I shoot you, Ninja barked. Antium, I... I love you, Zek said. Shut. I don't know. I'm just thinking Shut. here. Shut. Do we have uh, anything to read that is physically worse than this? I feel like we peaked too early with this series. I need a second. Okay. I need Take a all the time you need. Okay. Remember the full context of the, like, this is the dude that tried to kill... All of them, like, three times. Multiple times. Mm-hmm. Uh, on to him. I, I, I'm in love with you, Zek said. Really? Because <laughs> I think you're kind of cute, on to him, replied. <laughs> you want to go out sometime? <laughs> Zek said. Sure, on to him, replied. Ninja lowered his gun and put it back on the table before saying to Zek, You hurt my sister in any way and I put a bullet in your head. Got it, Zek replied. Zek and Antium went out on their first date. This was really vindicating because... So, as I said, this is basically just a fan fiction of 13-year-old me and my three closest friends. So real life Antium and real life Zekafon were Zekafon was into her, which is why I wrote this that way. She was never like super into him. Right. Which is unfortunate because I think they would have been great together. But he was oh into my her. Gosh. And then real life Elena, I was super into her. And she was yeah. super into me, which is why it got wrote this way. Oh Written, my not wrote. gosh. Oh yeah, I get to make oh the joke I made at the gosh. kitchen table this morning. I really <laughs> hate I really hate this story. It's very it's like 
oh, you tried to kill me. But dang, Shadi, you kind of cute. She's <laughs> like, yeah, you kind of cute too, though. And he's like, hey, I know like you kidnapped my wife at that one point, but like, you broke we, out of prison too, by the way. You broke out of prison, and to nobody come. questions it, right? Like they're like, oh no, there he goes. It's like the freaking Mega Mind prison <laughs> when he's like in the like the single room with the TV. <laughs> Listen. He, he was just like, he's just like, I know you tried to kid, I you kidnap my wife that one time, but hey, have her back by 10 o'clock, buddy. <laughs> like, or I'll put a bullet, <laughs> in, I'll your put a bullet in your head. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay. Oh, well, well, here we go. Here we Another are. time skip. Oh my God. Actually, I think two big time skips in the same paragraph. Yeah. All right. All right. A few months later, Ninja found out that Elena was pregnant with twins. Oh, she no co? No. <laughs> one of them's oh going to be God. a reincarnated doctor and the other one's going to have cancer. <laughs> Whoa. Guess which one I am. <laughs> Yo, tag yourself. <laughs> <laughs> are you Aqua or Ruby? <laughs> there are two wolves inside you. One of them is a reincarnated doctor and one of them has cancer. <laughs> Oh my gosh. The genders were unknown, but the couple was excited nonetheless. Okay, so we have a few months later. So a few months after two years and a few months. So she was three months pregnant when they were when, like, when they found we out. found out. Yeah, they're usually not how that works. You know, yeah. in a world with modern technology, they would know like day, week, like two. Right. Well, they, not, you know. Not, okay, anyway. You know. Six months later. So it was three months. Um,. Elena gave birth to a boy and a girl of whom they named Adam and Belle. A, B, C. Adam had huh. spiky black hair like his father, and Belle had flowing dirty blonde hair, which was similar to Elena's hair. Nice. I'd like to think that both of these children came out of the womb with a full, with a head, full of head of hair. Like, like the little Rapunzel baby, <laughs> like full. Also, also, you're not slick. This was projection, like at a ten. <laughs> this was so a projection right. at a ten. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know who you thought you were. I thought I was ninja. But dude. all right. <laughs> <laughs> he was ninja. <laughs> I was ninja, dude. <laughs> can I? Do, you better enunciate I, that n. <laughs> can I do? Can I make a meme? <laughs> it's a picture of you with like a blue jacket and like it's really and it just says <laughs> Ninga. <laughs> oh, this episode's my a little gosh. off the cuff. This episode's guys. a little off the cuff. I'm sorry, guys. This Hope is you guys enjoy it. This is unhinged. Whew. Belle was raised similar to her mother with all the royal treatments and fancy clothing, while Adam spent most of his time with his father, being taught certain skills such as how to fight with swords, fists, and daggers. Adam also learned how to properly use a set of pistols. Gotta get the gun safety in there. Of course, of course. Of course. Um, once Adam had completed his training, he received two katanas. Two electro slide daggers oh, and what? two army grade pistols. What the actual heck is an Along electro his... slide dagger? <laughs> <laughs> slide to the left. <laughs> slide to the right. They just play that song whenever you Chris use cross. <laughs> um, oh. Along with his own pair of techno shades and his own blue leather jacket. Oh, he is actually oh just his God. dad. I needed. I think I was planning on killing Ninja off, so I needed. So you needed like needed him needed to a reincarnate, suitor. right? Yo, have you seen that meme where he's like, he's like, our future's too bright. We have to wear shades, Mini Me. <laughs> That's the vibe I get. I'd also like to believe because the next um, thing is when Belle turned fifteen, she received the official title of princess alongside Adam, who received the title of prince. So. The time jump had not happened when he received all of these oh weapons. Oh my god! So he's like a toddler who knows uh, how to use a gun. That's dangerous. I've always said we should arm toddlers, dude. If you armed, I've always if you said armed that. toddlers. It's it's Jover. <laughs> um, Ninja and Elena were proud parents of their two children. About five years after Adam and Belle were born, so we're going back, bruh. So. We're going back 10 years. So they're 50, and now they're five. So now they're so five. It's like little filler gap here. Zek proposed to Antium and they got married a year later. 
Is this they took their honeymoon on Caldava and were gone for about a week. I, I don't know, know why, why I needed to specify. Why do you feel the need? Oh, they were gone for about... I feel like it's not like a letter to like update your dying mother about like your life. Hey, like, mom. My hey, mom, friends went on a week. They went on their honeymoon in Caldava. They were gone about a fortnight. <laughs> about a fortnight. They were gone. See, also, is this one of those situations where like when a family tells tells their daughter, they're like, yo... That dude is bad news. And she's like, I don't care. I'm going to marry him anyway. <laughs> and he's like, no, he he's changed, really. He hasn't tried he's, to kidnap anyone in so long. Yeah, it's been five years. He hasn't oh kidnapped my anyone. Gosh. Okay, before you do the next one, what is your favorite villain of all time? My favorite villain of all time? Yeah. Um, The first one that comes to mind is Thanos. Okay. So instead of using the V name in here, oh, use Thanos. Okay. Because cool. this is this is the one thing that I actually carried forward, and I don't you want don't it want out to. there. Okay. Mm-mm. So use that V word is now is Thanos. now Thanos. Okay. Which might make it funnier. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. When Adam and Bell were sixteen, so it's there been was a year. right. So a year later, when Adam and Bell were sixteen, there was turmoil in the government of Neontovia. The Emperor of Neontovia was upset with the Emperor of Clust because Clust was taking too much of the stone reserves. This is Minecraft. Um, this led to a civil war between the realms because of the stone? The stone. Okay. This is like just stone me playing. Stone is actually like gold. This is just me playing Catan. <laughs> um, this led to a civil war between the realms. Ninja, Adam, and much of the stone and Zekophon were tasked with the mission of protecting Elena, Bell, and Antium from the invading Clustians. Clustians, yeah. Clustians. Also, like, I'm sorry, Zekophon is just, like, part of their team now. Like, yeah. he had a redemption arc. He's married. He's a good guy now. That's wild. You see what marriage does to him? Oh, my Completely gosh. reforms you. No more murder. Oh, my God. <laughs> no more kidnapping your sister. <laughs> no you more know? kidnapping your sister-in-law. You know? <laughs> anyway. Um, on the front lines, Ninja and Zek were fighting against the Clustians' general Thanos. <laughs> Thanos was known for his brutal fighting techniques, which had slain many generals before him. Ninja, being arrogant, went straight for Thanos and began fighting with him. The two dueled for what seemed like hours. After a lot of fighting, Ninja had Thanos in a deathlock. And as Ninja began to swing his sword down to behead Thanos, he felt a weird sensation that made him drop his sword. <laughs> this is just essentially Infinity War. <laughs> this is actually um, just... I wrote Infinity War way ahead of time. Oops. <laughs> made him drop his sword. The next thing he knew, he was on the ground in the death lock with Thanos holding a sword to his face. Thanos then swung down and would have killed Ninja if Zek didn't come and bump him. So it's really just like, I'm going to kill you. And then Zach is just like, boom. <laughs> Get a little hip bump in there. Bop. Bump. Uh, Thanos cut off Ninja's arm instead of cutting him in half because Zek bumped him. Thanos Wait. got Zek off of him and knocked Ninja out. There we go again. Not much else is known about the end of the Realm War of 2426 other than Ninja was taken to the Neontovian Hospital in the palace. Okay. A couple things. We never understood the sensation that made him drop his sword. No. Yeah, that is because never Because as you were reading it, I was like, oh, it's because he got his arm cut off. But then later it says he cut because, his arm off. Because. And it was bumped. because he got bumped that the sword, instead of like cutting him in half, right. it so cut his arm off. He just randomly dropped his sword. What a loser. Why? Also, would you believe me if I told you I wrote this before I had ever watched anime? Yes. <laughs> this was entirely pre-anime like writing i had seen like maybe zelda and star wars star wars was probably the most violent thing i right, watched right that would have influenced this gum. and some marvel obviously because thanos right. is in here <laughs> Daggum. all right well uh, also, also 24 26 <laughs> bruh Oh, uh, like what a year also like we just put an entire war into one paragraph yeah <laughs> also, they were not fighting over her getting over her. It was they over the stone, over the stone reserve. I could have had a my great bad. follow up there. Um, oh my gosh! <sighs> so this is the future. It's been 16 years oh, since the initial yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or no, 
18 because they were married for two years before the 16. Yes. So we're 18 um, years since this started. So he was like 20 ish. Yeah. Uh, now he's like 38. Dang. Man is pushing Bro 40. is old little Tom Brady over here. <laughs> like, dude. Uh, dude well, needs to he hasn't retire. lost his wife and kids yet. Oh, yet. <laughs> um, Spoilers. <laughs> when Ninja woke up, he was greeted with a smile by Elena. She told him about what happened after he was knocked out. Oh, when Ninja tried to get happened? up and hug Elena, he noticed how he could barely feel his left arm. Oh, I didn't oh. go with my stereotypical trope. Usually when I write characters and they lose an arm, it's always the right over the left. Anytime. Interesting. Uh, I guess I wanted to be different. Um, when he looked over at his arm, he was shocked to see it covered in metal. Ninja had a metal arm. Wow. <laughs> no way. In really? case you didn't pick up what was happening, he has a metal arm. In case you needed that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ninja panicked, but Elena calmed him down. Once Ninja was released from the hospital, he carried on life as normal. A few things were different, though. Ninja couldn't always fully control his arm at first. Once he punched a guard in the face because the Sergus malfunctioned. <laughs> I don't think that was a malfunction. I don't think the That was not a malfunction, buddy. <laughs> Oops, my bad. Um, Ninja was always afraid that he would hurt Elena, so he tried to keep his distance. Elena began to pick up on this, and she wanted to find out the truth. No way I Ain't summarized no way this you in a said sentence. This. Was Ninja cheating on her? Was he secretly planning to divorce? She wanted the truth and the truth she got. After he told her the truth, he started doing things as a couple. Oh, so they like fully... That like was fully resolved. One, that's what I'm saying. I can't believe I summarized this in one sentence. It was like he was didn't want to hurt her, so he was scared and pulled away, and she was scared and was like, "Oh my gosh, is he cheating on me? Is there is there is he planning divorce?" And then they talked about it, and so now they're now they're fine. Now they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows the best stories are the ones where an entire arc is told in one sentence. Obviously, could you imagine telling that. like? An entire book of Lord of the Rings in one, one. Why would one you sentence? not? Why would you not? Anyway, I don't, I've always thought that that was better. Um. Anyway, Ninja was walking around the palace one day, and Elena called him to their room. Whoa! When he arrived, she said that she was pregnant again. Whoa! Ninja was overjoyed, but he suddenly felt an uncomfortable urge. The uncontrollable, 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 uncontrollable not urge. uncomfortable. Those are different. <laughs> The, what I'm about to read, <laughs> it's just Star Wars. Might be the it's most fun. shocking thing I've ever heard. I did not expect this. Um, he suddenly felt an uncontrollable urge. The urge felt evil. It felt murderous. Boom, boom, boom. Ninja's eyes turned a dark shade of blue, and his metal arm grabbed Elena's throat and choked her. <laughs> her dead body fell to the floor, and Ninja began a <laughs> killing spree throughout the palace. Terror filled his head when he woke up. It was only a dream. He looked down at his wife sleeping silently next to him and got out of bed. He walked out onto the porch of their room and leaned against the ledge to process his nightmare. Elena noticed, noticed he got out of bed and she rolled over. She also got out of bed and walked over to him. She asked him, what happened? Why are you out of bed this late at night? He replied and said, I had another nightmare. This one was bad. Well... Tell me what happened, she said in a calm tone. I, 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 I killed you, he said with a shaky voice. Well, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I forgot I put this in there. <sighs> I, <laughs> I don't know. This feels a little blasphemous. It's a little much. Okay. Well, <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I can do this. Okay. I, Ooh, I, 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 the next I, sentence is worse. I work. killed you. <sighs> I killed you. <laughs> Lord. Uh, this is, <laughs> guys, I'm sorry. I'm sure this is so freaking annoying to like just <laughs> listen to us laugh at reading ahead. I'm so physically uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> I, I killed you, he said with a shaky voice. Well, <laughs> unless God says so. I don't think I'm going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> this is, this is, 
This is the worst part, everybody. <laughs> if you're in the car, you might want to pull over because <laughs> you might w- want to drive off a bridge after hearing that. Mm. Unless God says so, I don't think I'm going anywhere t- anytime soon, she said while leaning on his bare chest. <laughs> she looked, he looked down and smiled at her, and they went and got back in bed. Okay. There's a couple things here. <sighs> First of all, steamy. Does steamy. this sound familiar? I'm uh, woo, it's getting hot in here. Let me tell you, <laughs> Ninja and Elena, Pete couple, best romance of all Do time. You... It sounds a little bit like Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> I was um, hoping you made that connect. Where um, he has a nightmare, where she dies, he gets out, goes in. And it's very funny that it's like specifically walks right, out onto right, the porch and leans right, against the ledge. And right. she's like, what's wrong? He's like, well, I killed you. And she was like, oh, I'm not going to die. It'll be fine. And then LOL. she like leans and then they go back to bed. Right. Like this is, I was also, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like this was also so edgy. Like 13 well, year old, he was like, oh, this is. This is peak. Also, I had to hit him with the unless God says so. Unless God says because so. Because as a Christian writer at the time, you I have had to, to insert like, check my box. Yeah. Hey. This was my DEI. Stay prayed up, guys. <laughs> I had to make sure God was in there. Oh my gosh. Oh, yay. I'm so nice, excited about nice. this. Um I'm so excited about one. this. It's gonna be Remember to use Thanos. Remember to use Thanos. Use also, Thanos. this paragraph, we haven't had some uh, highlighted portions. Yeah, we got highlighted portions here. It was good for a while. And then yeah, I was we like, were I doing bored. good. And then you're like, nah, I got to crank it up. Yeah, the next couple pages have a lot of that. Um, cool. Okay. The next morning, Ninja and Elena decided to go out for a while. But the whole day, Ninja seemed distant, still thinking about his nightmare the night before. Walking slightly behind Elena, Ninja felt a sudden thud on the back of his head and everything went black. Of course he did. He got knocked out again. In public, by the way. Right. He has, like, awful senses. He's, like, in public walking in this town and he just... Right. Like, why is he walking without guards? He is the guard. Idiot. What a loser. Idiot. (sighs) When he woke up, he was tied to a chair with his metal arm magnetized to a wall. That is actually kind of smart. It's actually dope. He looked around the room to try to find Elena and saw her tied down on a table with some sort of device above Ooh. her. Frantically trying to escape, Ninja heard a slow clapping coming from the shadows. As a figure walked into the light, he said, you, you try so desperately to escape, and for what? What? That's a villain line. That is a like, villain line. I stole line. that from something. Is that from something? You try so you desperately. Try so desperately to escape and for what? Maybe it is a Thanos line. To save a girl? Not to save a girl. It's the you try so desperately. Yeah. Oh, that- it's when he's like um you think so desperately that you're right but yet you fail all the same. Yeah. It was that's that line, what he not says. verbatim, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. I d- thanks Marvel for stealing my stuff for Infinity War. I want to cut it nice, that pie. Nice, right? For real. Um, you try so desperately to escape, and for what? To save a girl? Who are you? Ninja asked. I am your worst nightmare. <laughs> I am Thanos, Lord of Dark Ooh. Magic. I have always been wanting to torture you, but I have never been able to figure out how. Oh. Or no, Thanos. Not. I have to believe that. <laughs> That's okay. Um. But once I saw you defend your precious wife during the realm war, I figured out how your weakness isn't a weapon. It's her. And then I think you can connect some dots on what happens in this highlighted portion. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Just consider the scene and that she's, you know, strapped to a weird table machine. Um, Let your imagination do the rest. um, You know, because it probably won't be any worse than what I wrote. Right. Um, You know, this this is some real like Saw movie level like yeah weird gross details. So we're gonna save you. Skipping ahead. Go ahead. Ninja (laughs) began feeling a sensation, the same one he felt in his dream. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to accept it, but he did. Oh my gosh. His eyes turned dark blue, and he jerked his metal arm free and ripped the ropes apart. He then ran over to Thanos and punched him in the face with his metallic fist. (gasps) Thanos went flying into the brick wall and was knocked out. Ninja then destroyed the machine and carried a knockdown Elena back home. 
I really love the thought of when he, you know, like the metal pipe, like drop sound. <laughs> That's what I imagine Boom. it sounds like when he hits him in the face. Just like a bing, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I also like, this is one of the only times where foreshadowing actually came in handy. Right. It was a little too quick of a turnaround. Right. But it was like, if we had mentioned on page one that he had this power, like when his eyes turned right. dark blue and he goes right. crazy, because it's never explained right. why he does no. that. Um, and then you have this, like it would have yeah. been a full circle moment yeah. if it wasn't in the paragraph before. Oh, okay, guys, we're so close. You get a lore dump here. Yeah, I do get a lore I dump. Because I was having a lot of fun and I realized it needed to start going somewhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's usually how it happens. We, we're so close, guys. We're so close. We're so close. Mm. Ninja carried Elena all the way home and he set her on their bed. He covered her with blankets and told Zek and Antium to stay and watch her to avoid another kidnapping. Another one. Another one. Another one. Ninja then grabbed his jacket, sword, and glasses and left. He needed some alone time. Honestly, based. Good for him. He went to the palace garage and took his motorcycle, which he called the death cycle. The motor Was this Breath of the Wild phase? <laughs> yeah. No, dude, was this pre or post Breath this of the was Wild? During Breath of the Wild okay, this at was, this point. Okay. Because I started it in 2015. Yeah. Or no, I lied. I started in 2016. Yeah. And then at this point, a year had gone by and Breath right. of the Wild was out. Okay. I hadn't played it, but so you I were into it. knew it. You probably watched all the YouTube videos sure about did. the Master Cycle. Uh, the motorcycle was painted a nice dark blue with a lightning detail down the sides and middle. ka Oh. I'll save that to the okay. end. He drove the cycle out of the garage and went somewhere he hadn't been in a long time. His first home. When he arrived, he was surprised to see that no one had bought the house. No one had even cleaned it since the incident over 20 years ago. No, oh I think it's more like 40 at this point. Yeah, it's been a very long he's time. he's pushing 40. Right, because we... <laughs> because we also like had like a 15-year time jump for his children. Who were never mentioned again, were never. The yeah, they're just like off... They're, they went to college. They're gone. They went to college. Um... Actually, I genuinely don't think they're... That's hilarious. No. Uh, the house was covered in vines and moss and didn't look overall very welcoming. Yeah. Ninja went in and sat down on what was his bed. When he sat down, something fell underneath his bed. It was a box and what looked to be a very old box. <laughs> Ninja opened the box and saw something inside. It looked like a piece of paper. He picked up the piece of paper and read it. This is my super secret box. <laughs> it's a SpongeBob reference to anyone that caught it. And the paper said, Ninja and Antium, if you're reading this, then you probably found the box hidden beneath Ninja's bed. Very clever, Mom. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you may think... <laughs> <laughs> just when i thought this was like getting like kind of good <laughs> what are you talking about no it was like not awful just when i thought it was getting like readable you gotta hit me with the you may think we are dead but we aren't we just went into hiding we hid you to keep you away from his influence uh thanos wanted you to be one of his servants only the guardian armor and guardian sword can kill him permanently. Any other weapon will just kill him temporarily. So he's basically Calamity Gain. Right, right. This is turning into Zelda fan See, fiction. I told you. Oh my gosh. The guardian sword and armor are hidden in different places. Mm, yeah, this is the Zelda movie. There is a vault with the map in it under your bed. The combination is Ninja's birthday since he's the older twin. We promise to come find you soon. Love, Kai and Natasha, or mom and dad. <laughs> Their parents' names are Kai and Natasha. <laughs> what? what? What's it to you? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you got a problem with that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Our parents are still alive, Ninja said to himself in shock. The map to the guardian sword and the armor is under my bed, he said, reciting what was on the letter. Getting down on the floor, he found and unlocked the vault. Inside, he found an incredibly detailed map showing the location of the Guardian Armor and Guardian Sword. Each was located on opposite sides of the island of Neontovia, which was shaped like a lightning phoenix. 
what the heck? There were other X's on the map. Ninja was confused until he saw the key at the bottom that pointed out the shapes as representing the different types of armor and weapons. The types were Guardian, Defender, Mage, and Princess. Ninja, Ninja assumed these armors were meant for him, Antium, Zek, and Elena. So he grabbed the map, got on the death cycle, and rode back to Neontovia. So, homeboy. I was trying to establish some lore here. I, 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 see, I appreciate the lore. But this dude assumes that his parents left him this map with armor for him and people that they don't know exist. Yeah, two people. He's like, don't this know is definitely name. for my wife and my <laughs> sister sister's and husband. Her, my brother. Right. It was like, it was like, oh, it's for, they left it for them, and it's like, it looks like they left that like right before, like forty something years ago. I also want to point out that they're probably dead now. Right. Because it's been forty, been 40 years. years. <laughs> Even if they're like in hiding, like no, they're they're dead. They're dead. Um. Also. I'd like to point out that I actually drew a map of like the Phoenix. Right. It was like a spiral. And cause now we've established that one Neontovia is an Island, right? which is why it needed a portal yeah. to get anywhere. Um, and this should have happened at the beginning. Yes, this was a, <laughs> this was absolutely an exposition dump that needed to happen like nine pages ago. Right, right. <laughs> um, but we're establishing lore a little too late in the game. Yeah, but it's that's okay. okay. That's we okay. got forty year old ninja, and I was like, <laughs> he's like, oh my back, oh my back. <laughs> like, oh, he's it like hurts fat, Mister Incredible. This story. <laughs> so fat, Mister Incredible. Yeah, I don't. I think I was trying to find a way to make him younger because I wasn't happy with the, with how quickly I had progressed the time right, jump, right. but I wasn't going to go back and change anything. Right. Because honestly, because once you write it, it's done. I could have t- written the kids out entirely, taken that out, erased the 15 year time yeah. jump and still done everything else. The same. Right. Because nothing else changes. Right. Nothing. Cause the kids were just kind of shoehorned in there. Right. All right. Hit, hit me with it. When Where? Ninja got back to Neon Tovia, he told the others about the armors and said he had a map to the location of each set. He then pulled Antium aside and told her about the letter from their parents and what they had, what they said about Thanos. Mom and dad are still alive, and I think Thanos has them. Ninja said to Antium. What? Well, if that's true, then we have to stop him now more than ever. I hate that line in movies. If that's true, we've stopped him now more more than than ever. ever. It's like, oh my gosh. Then they heard a loud explosion and rushed into the main room where they had met. Zekafon laid on the floor, knocked out. Elena was passed out in the arms of a dark figure who was hovering under the hole in the ceiling. Got him. He was wearing a hood. Ninja nor Antium could get a clear look at his face. The dark figure then used his black wings to fly up through the hole with Elena and disappeared. Nice. Ninja and Antium exchanged a look and went to check on Zekafon. So I don't know if... The, I genuinely um, don't remember if this is a new villain or if this is Thanos. Okay. Okay. Like, I don't know. Would you believe me, audience, if I told you we have, like, about a page left? <laughs> like, this so, is the end. I also want you to know, this story was never finished. Right. Like, there's no, but like, actual I do conclusion. I vaguely remember what the conclusion was. And I will go over it at the end okay, to give cool. the audience a semblance mm-hmm. of closure. Okay. Ready? Ninja was pissed. I would be too. <laughs> Elena was kidnapped again. Zekafon was out of action and Thanos was nowhere to be found. Ninja decided to take matters in his own hands. He grabbed his hooded cape, which he called Night Rider. And decided to go and find Elena himself. Who names their clothes? He names everything. With he a names dark, everything. edgy teen name. He's so My bad. death cycle, electro death slide cycle. daggers. Let me get my electro slide dagger. My techno shades. Oh, where is... Mom, where's my Knight Rider? <laughs> my gosh. The only thing he took was his sword and his bow, plus some food and water. Why is he using a bow? He knows Bruh. how to use guns. <laughs> 
he has carried pistols for the rest of the And he's story. like, no. And I, now I, he's like, you know what? I got to switch to a boat. Is is this where he's like, nah, I got to go back. To, I got to go back. No, 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 no. This was his uh, Link era. Oh, my gosh. Because he's got a sword and a bow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. This was my Breath of the Wild era. <laughs> he set off on the death cycle and headed towards the woods. Upon arrival, he found nothing. But as he looked harder, he found a note left by the mysterious figure in the woods. The note read, If you ever want to see your true love again, <laughs> you will journey through these woods and face three challenges. Fail any of them and she dies. Best of luck. <laughs> Signed, your worst nightmare. Ninja thought about what to do. Wait. He decided to go into the forest and face the challenges, no matter what they may be. Oh, so, so this is Thanos. Do you know how I know that? How? Because he signed the note, your worst nightmare. And yeah, which is how he said before. a couple paragraphs ago, that's how he introduced himself. Right. That I'm was like nightmare. my super clever. Yeah. Like you're, yeah. So this, was this like trial of the sword yeah, type Yeah, this was stuff? the Lost Woods, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's not very subtle. <laughs> What was, what was the thing I was, uh, how did he know to go to the woods? <laughs> no, that's what I was saying. He was like, I guess I got to go to the woods. And it's, it's like, it's like the, the woods where when stuff goes down, you're like, oh, right. this is the yeah, first place I'm going to go. Not that's a pub anymore. Not a pub I'm anymore. To the He's too old now. He gets acid reflux. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he can't go to the pub anymore. <laughs> Those days are behind him. He should have, <laughs> in this movie, he has like a beer belly. Like there is no way he's, he's no not longer, like. Well, no, because she leaned against his bare chest. His bare chest. So like he had to have been ripped. No, bare chest does not. And bare chest does not mean like there's like Swole? this rock hard peck that she's putting her head on. Like I think that was what's implied though. Yeah, I mean if you're picturing like Aiden Christensen, like build Hayden Christensen. Sorry, Hayden Christensen build from like Revenge of the Sith. Then yeah, but also he seems to like have a drinking problem and be like four <laughs> and like be like forty five years old. He also has a metal arm, so like I really don't know how that plays. And you never see fat dudes with metal arms. Have you noticed that? See, that's what I'm saying. You notice that how in movies only skinny people get prosthetic limbs. <laughs> <laughs> This is fat phobic. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think, I think you know? he was supposed to be like Bucky Barnes. Yeah, right. Because he's got the left metal, the arm, left metal not the arm, right one. Right. <laughs> oh All right. Gosh. Whew. Whew. This is our last bit of orange, but it's also the last full page. Yeah, it's the last full page. There's a little um, bit of a little bit of highlights here. The first challenge was pretty easy. He just had to cross a lava lake, which he had no idea how this wasn't burning the forest down, but whatever. But whatever. The second was a little harder. Okay, are you ready for this? I don't think you're oh. ready for this. this With is Ninja just having to face wild. a giant stone monster. Yep. That's after the defeating wild. the stone monster, so a stone talus. Yep. He moved on to the last challenge, which was a giant creature named the Guardian. The Guardian? I added the in the front. The Guardian was a mechanical creature that had multiple legs and shot a laser out of its eye. So yes, this is actually the Guardians from Breath of the Wild. Yes. This took Ninja a while, but he finally brought it down. After that, he found the mysterious figure and saw Elena strapped down on a table. Not again. Again. Also, what's the power scaling in this story? Non-existent. You, I feel like you got, you were too bored to write like a full, like actual challenge sequence, and you're just like, yeah, he. No, because he I was trying it. to get to this. Yeah. This is what this right. is the reason I wrote the whole thing. Right. You want that second half. Um. This took Ninja a while, but he finally brought it down. After that, he found the mysterious figure and saw Elena strapped down on a table. Well done. You've passed all my tests. You clearly love this girl. Um, the mysterious figure said, well, duh, I came this far. Now let her go. Ninja demanded. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, nah, I'd rather see you both suffer. Ninja stood up and drew his sword. Now we don't want any violence, do we? The mysterious figure said. We wouldn't want her to be dead now, would we? I don't know why I did it that way. Um, <laughs> they stood in the same position for 10 minutes, another time skip, before Ninja asked, what do you want? Her dead, he said abruptly. Then why don't you kill her? Ninja asked, because I like to see people suffer. He replied. That was the hardest projection of this entire story. <laughs> that is the moral yeah. of me writing this at age 13. Was... 
I like to see people suffer. <laughs> like you really, like you must really love this girl. You're like I do. I love her I with my do. entire heart. She's my she's my soulmate. She's my soulmate. You don't understand. Oh my oh god. Okay. He replied. Ninja was filled with rage and ran towards him, impaling the figure. And he's dead. He did. So either that was Thanos. Or it wasn't Thanos, and it was also someone signing your right, worst nightmare. Right, right. I imagine it was Thanos. No, I don't think it was, because now he'd be dead. Yeah, because he needed the Guardian stuff. Uh, to... But he would. they said that the Guardian stuff wouldn't... That was the only thing that would permanently kill him. Anything right. else would just injure him. I think that's where I was going okay. with it. <clears throat> Elena was quite possibly on her deathbed. Bad things happened in the last paragraph, by the way. <clears throat> Yeah, um, it's kind of almost died. It's really gruesome. So, you know, Elena was quite possibly on her deathbed and Ninja wasn't happy about it. They said she could recover, though, <laughs> but may have memory problems due to loss of so much blood. That made no sense. But I think I Googled it to see if that was scientifically accurate. You have memory loss from loss of blood. I think you do. Huh. Because, like, you don't get blood to your brain. Right. So, so you can't, like, like, register a memory, I guess. I, guess I don't know. So. That's don't bizarre. Know. Um, Ninja sat next to her bed for endless nights without sleep while she recovered. Antium had to force him to bed one night, and she said she would stay up and watch Alana. Sorry. <laughs> Where did that come from? You said her name right the that whole time. That was, like, time. such a brain fart. Um... He would stay up and watch Alina so that Ninja could sleep. After four weeks of recovery, Alina finally woke up. Elena. Elena. What happened? I just, I think I hit a wall. I brain. did too. Ale After four weeks of recovery, Elena finally woke up. Antium was the first face she saw uh, since Ninja was sleeping. She didn't remember anything about the kidnapping or being in the infirmary. Ninja woke up the next morning with her in the bed next to him. He was surprised when she when he opened his eyes and she was there. They then <laughs> <laughs> This caught me so off guard, man. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh This is the worst part. <laughs> this is the last part I have to read, and then the last part is yours. And the last part is yours. <laughs> uh, this might be the worst part though. Um <laughs> You were uh, you were down bad. <laughs> sure <laughs> Listen, was. You were down bad. Okay. He was surprised when he opened his eyes and she was there. Then they shared a long kiss and Ninja said that he would never let that happen again. The wounds on her stomach were healed, but left permanent scars, <laughs> not only on her body, but on her mind as well. This is a metaphor for women in the workplace that have to do. It's like. <laughs> wow. That's like the language that it's giving. This is like this the permanent scars, not only on her body, but on her mind, but on her mind. Like, I feel like I'd get this in my Instagram reels. Yeah. And I would just be this like, an I'm going reel. to the comments to read like people just trolling. <laughs> All right, this is the last paragraph. The last paragraph. With Ninja suffering from his encounter in the woods, he went out to take a break. While on his break, he had a vision, a vision that would dictate his future. Oh, my gosh. The vision showed... Mm, I almost did it again. Thanos walking in his full demon form Whoa. towards Ninja with Elena and Zekafon dead on the ground. As Thanos walked up to Ninja, he said, this is your end. The vision cut out before could kill ninja ninja didn't know this would predict the future wait ninja didn't know this would predict the future but he had his doubts wait that's it he didn't know this would predict the future but he had his doubts but he had his doubts i think it's supposed to it's either supposed to be he did know this would predict the future and he had his doubts or i i, I see what you were trying to say impact his life i see what you were trying to say um Guys, that's the end. Yes, that's because how it what ends. happened was I actually rewrote this and took out all of the orange stuff. Yeah. Because it, by the time I came back around and I was like, oh, I should finish it, it was 2018. Right. And I was 16. And you were like, and this I was is like, weird. Mm, this ain't going to fly. Right. And that was the start of the Passion Project. 
that I'm working on now. Right. So, so I've rewritten it and taken out all of the... But it's way better now. Yeah, it actually has... <laughs> Solid Some character development, of story. Uh, good story, good morals, good messages. Everything right. makes sense. We actually um, hint towards things in the future. You don't actually have, you know, children for two paragraphs. And just then never come, never up come back again. to them. Um, yeah. So a brief summary on where this was going to go. Right. If yeah. I can remember it correctly. That vision was foretelling the future. Right. And that confrontation was going to happen. But I was going to do the very, like, anime-esque defy the future um right like we're gonna change the future because it's not right. set in stone until right. it happens we just we we know what's gonna happen so we're gonna change it right and they were gonna go and like find all the armor and fight him and stuff and right he's gonna die and everyone's gonna live happily ever after but we were probably gonna have some more orange scenes in there somewhere <laughs> if i had to be a betting man um yeah this um this is something this is this is <laughs> really really something. Sure this was. is a story. <laughs> um, is it though? <laughs> does this ha does this fit the defin dictionary definition of a story? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it's not much more than that though. Maybe it is a. It is. What is the definition of a story? Maybe it is. Nope. It's just a. It's it's just words strung together and you know Okay. So a story is an account of imaginary or real people and events told for entertainment. This so is entertaining. Dictionary definition. It is a story. It is a story. Whether it or is, not it's a good one. I actually consider this one of the stories of all time. This is I mean This is one of the stories of all time. This is an Oscar winning screenplay. This is um yeah, I saw the Oscars. I saw they they gave awards to a couple things that I was like, nah, Adventures of Ninja would. If some really <laughs> good animator wants to animate this verbatim and send it to um, us, I would love you forever. I would love that. Like that would be hilarious. Um, yeah. But so, don't animate the actual story. Animate us reading us it. Us reading it. And like having right, the mental verbatim. breakdowns. Right. Halfway um, through sentences. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, it was a lot of fun to go back and read this. I've read this once, like set six years we ago. We did a full table read with um, Megan a yeah. while ago. And it just wasn't it. Because this was like her, me and hers thing to just go and laugh at for fun right, days. Right, right. So we were like, oh, Jackson's the new kid in the friend group. Let's let's. We got to show him this awful learn. thing. And it was... You know, <clears throat> I remember none of this though. Like I remember we Good. read it once, and I was just like, "It was funny then, and it's funny now." So it's always hey, been funny. It's always been funny. It always will be. So thank you so much for watching this episode of the Nerdiest Podcast. I know it's a little different, but I hope it was fun and you enjoyed it. And if you like these episodes, we would love to make it a series. So we definitely need to know if you love it. So. Please send with a fr send it to a friend, share it on Instagram, you know, follow us on Instagram at the Nerdiest Podcast, send a DM, send an email, whatever you need. Please let us know if you want more of this because we'd love to make it a continuous series because we have so much material here from our so much younger days when we. Uh, I mean, Doc, we could go through the newer, like updated version that isn't yes. the passion project that is actually kind of good but still yeah. equally bad. <laughs> right. I have full, like long, long, like s multiple chapter stories we could go through. That we are, also like, have my Lego Ninjago. Oh fan my fiction. gosh, <laughs> this man has a Lego Ninjago fan fiction. That we really want to read. So make sure you support this series. Send it to a friend. Uh, word of mouth is the best way for us to grow. Make sure you go on the nerdiestpodcast.com and look at new merch right there. That's really exciting. So glad that we get to do that. Follow us on Instagram at the Nerdiest Podcast, on YouTube at Nerdiest Podcast, and Twitter at Nerdiest Pod. Now, thank you so much. We will be back to normal next week. Thank you so much for joining us on these really cool in-person episodes. And it's been really fun. Two episodes we've gotten to do this. Uh, we will see you next time. And until then, oh, bye. Bye.